Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varshapte, I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, IIT Bombay. So, we will talk today about uh, some results uh, of MG1 queues and uh, memoryless arrivals. Uh, I am as usual going to show the slides that uh, uh, just uh, remind you of the open queuing systems and the parameters of these queuing systems. Uh, by now you should be very familiar with this, this is just for your reference, these are the metrics that we are interested in. Um, and this is actually showing the summary of uh, pretty much everything that we have done till now for uh, in, a, in a sort of a completely general GG CK sense. Uh, some of these metrics uh, if you just put um, K uh, going to infinity then these give you the uh, GGC with the infinite buffer uh, those are the metrics it gives you. Uh, for example, we know that there is no loss uh, in infinite buffer systems, so PL becomes 0 for infinite k um, and uh, yeah, loss probability uh, for any value is basically just 0 uh, if there is an infinite buffer and here also this becomes uh, lambda if uh, k is infinity and this is also equal to lambda tau by C if uh, k is infinity. So, uh, all of these uh, have nice uh, values, but uh, we know that these values all we really have is some relationships between these right and we know that the last uh, one or two uh, lectures we have actually been studying Little's law and we have actually done some examples and case study for Little's law. And we know that uh, we can relate for example, this and uh, this and this, the number of customers and response time, we can relate um, the uh, number in queue and waiting time right these we can relate and actually um, I want to also remind you that even the utilization law is nothing but uh, an application of Little's law for the server. So, it is actually if you uh, relate lambda the throughput with the service time then you get utilization. So, uh, we know ho how these are related to each other you get uh, you can get utilization if, uh, if it is a G G CQ you actually can get the exact utilization of lambda tau, but these uh, they are only related to each other we neither know this nor this yet neither do we know this yet nor this yet. So, uh, can do we have anything uh, any result that can help us uh, get at least one of these ok. So, turns out actually uh, response time uh, that is average response time formula does exist for the MG1Q. What is MG1Q? Uh, inter arrival time is exponential uh, meaning memoryless. Uh, so, the m remember it is for memoryless. Um, service time is general that is the g and we have a single server and infinite buffer. For this q uh, actually a formula for response time exists. Uh, exists. Uh, the name is Polaschek Kinchin formula. We are not going to prove it in this uh, course. Uh, we are I am just going to state the result and maybe just do some examples so that you can understand it. Um, so, this is the formula let me explain to you what comes in this. So, let C s squared be the squared coefficient of variation of service time ok. Now, what is the squared coefficient of variation? So, I am going to show you uh, another slide for this. So, for any random variable actually coefficient of variation is uh, defined for any random variable. Uh, suppose uh, in our case of course, we are looking at service times, suppose it has mean tau and variance everybody knows variance of course, sigma squared s. Uh, so, squared coefficient of variation is defined as uh, sigma squared s divided by tau squared. What, what is this? This is basically variance by mean squared. Uh, what is this why why is this uh, particular uh, metric useful? Uh, it is basically like a normalized uh, metric of variance. So, what do I mean? So, let me give an example ok. Um, assume there is a random variable x whose variance is given by um, 10 ok. So, there is one vari random variable x whose variance is given by is this. So, this is going to be sigma squared x this is given by 10 and let us suppose its mean is 100. Okay. Now, assume there is a random variable y whose variance is uh, now this is going to be sigma squared y let us say this was tau sub x and uh, this is again 10 
it's the same variance okay but suppose the mean of this is around 10000 okay so tau y is 10000 so uh, if you look at these numbers uh, i would like to ask you as to which of these random variables just feel a little more variable to you which is inherently more variable x versus y okay so x is showing a variance of 10 on a mean of 100 whereas y is showing a variance of 10 on a mean of 10000 it is kind of intuitive right that x is the more variable of the random variables here because 10 on 100 is a little more significant than 10 on 100000 so this is what is captured by this coefficient of variation which is that it takes so in this case for example uh, this will have a, a coefficient of variation of 10 divided by uh, 10000 and this will have 10 divided by actually uh, this will be this is 10 raised to 4 so this is going to be 10 raised to 8 okay so now this is greater than this 10 over divided by 10000 is greater than 10 divided by 10 raised to the 8 obviously so uh, this is showing this is a metric that shows that x has more inherently more variability relatively more variability than y okay. so that is what this captures and uh, so its coefficient of variation which is uh, used in this uh, uh, polar check kinchin response time formula um, so response time is equal to of course we have the service time component there the tau which is the service time and this is basically the waiting time okay so it is lambda tau squared in bracket c s squared plus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 1 minus rho so what does this formula say right when you see a formula you should always try to understand the story that the formula says the story of this formula which is by the way instead of polaschek kinchin sometimes we just call it pk formula okay so the pk formula what is it telling you it tell, is telling you that uh, response time increases non linearly with utilization right as rho in, increases 1 minus rho will decrease okay if 1 minus 1 uh, if 1 minus rho decreases then 1 over 1 minus rho will increase right that is the factor here 1 over 1 minus rho that factor will increase uh, but that factor increases non linearly because it is this 1 minus rho is in the denominator okay so it is not a linear increase so there is a non linear increase with respect to uh, increasing utilization um, and if the uh, mean is the same so i have the same mean and uh, um, an arrival rate if it is the same okay the mean is the same mean of the service time is the same arrival rate is the same so that means utilization is going to be the same right uh, if utilization mean and uh, service time is the same still the response time will be higher if the variance of the the coefficient of variance of the service time is higher okay so that is basically high uh, you know sort of normalized variance not just variance but if the normalized variance variance is higher so clearly if the if the mean service time is the same uh, then uh, whichever random variable has the higher variance will also have the higher coefficient of variation so if that these quantities are higher then response time is higher uh, so this is a very interesting uh, point I, you sh, uh, should think about it as to uh, why is it the case that even if the mean service time is the same the arrival rate is the same just if the variance of service time is different then the response time is higher uh, and this is because if you think about a queue okay uh, the waiting time especially response time of course just has this fixed service time the average is the same of the service time the waiting time uh, increases of a customer that is let us say here uh, let us say tau for example is 10 milliseconds okay uh, but if the uh, service time has high variance then maybe uh, all these by some uh, randomness let us say this customer may have 20 millisecond service time this may have uh, 15 uh, this may have uh, another 10 and maybe this has 1 okay. So it is just it, it is entirely possible if it is highly variable that there are some high uh, service time customers in front of this. Uh, customer who has a service time of 1 uh, millisecond 
but this customer gets stuck behind all these and this customer's response time is actually going to be greater than 45 millisecond. Okay. So, uh, response time increases with variance because the compounding effect there is an adding effect of high service times which get go into the waiting times and so you get more samples of higher waiting times if there is higher variance. Okay. So, you can think about this, uh, but uh, yeah so let us see some examples. Um, we will first look at an example of MD1Q. In fact, this is an example of a service time that has no variance. So, sigma squared S is 0. So, C S squared is also 0, right. It is fixed deterministic D is for deterministic, right, deterministic. So, this is fixed. Uh, so, if it is fixed, uh, there is no variance. So, this uh, factor goes away. So, you just get tau plus lambda tau squared divided by 2 multiplied by 1 minus rho and if you plot it this is what it looks like. It is just to show remember the non-linearity is there this is non the non-linearity okay. as lambda increases it is the utilization that is going to increase and the non-linearity is there because of this okay. um, and uh, initially the growth is slow and then the growth is fast. Okay. Uh, we will look at another example of M M1. So, this is uh, basically exponentially distributed service time. So, uh, when service time is exponentially distributed with mean tau, uh, the variance is actually given by tau square. This is just uh, the property of exponential distribution uh, that the variance is as actually mean squared. You can look this up in any sort of statistics book. Uh, so, if uh, variance is equal to mean squared then uh, uh, coefficient of variation becomes tau squared divided by tau squared remember. Uh, so, this is equal to 1. So, actually coefficient of variation of exponential service time distribution is 1. So, now you stick that into the pk formula uh, this is the derivation uh, this is this is where the c s squared was and that is where we have put 1. So, lambda tau squared 1 plus 1 divided by 2 divided by 1 minus 2 1 minus rho. Uh, this 1 plus 1 and 2 cancels actually and you get and then if you multiply this here you get tau minus tau rho plus lambda tau squared. Uh, we just write it like this to then uh, write it as rho tau this lambda tau is going to be rho right for mm1q and then this minus uh, uh, t rho and uh, this is also t rho these cancel and you get tau divided by 1 minus rho. So, um, this is actually a very uh, important formula to remember uh, even if you do not remember anything else much in this uh, course. Uh, if you remember this it is very useful again this is the one that captures the non-linearity and let us look at the graph. So, uh, this is a graph again for uh, tau equal to some 0 0.5 and this gives us actually mu as 2 right. Um, and just for a mu equal to 2 we have taken lambda varying from just a low lambda 0 0.1 to 1 1.9 uh, it still has to be less than or equal to mu. So, we have just taken it to some some high value less than mu and this shows actually the comparison of mm1 versus md1 and you can clearly see that this is the graph corresponding to c s squared equal to 1 and this is the graph corresponding to c s squared equal to 0. So, obviously, this graph is lesser than this. So, higher the variance response everything else being the same this the means the mean was taken as the same uh, and we are varying lambda also in the same way it is the same lambda and the means are the same, but uh, later you see uh, a bigger divergence initially both the values are a little low, but later you can see that the M, uh, M, MM1 response time is going to be greater than the MD1 response time because C S squared is greater than. Uh, for mm1 is greater than c a squared for md1 okay so we'll do some more uh, examples and exercises in your in your practice problems uh, but uh, this is the basic story of the response time so once you have response time uh, those formulae n equal to lambda r n is equal to lambda r and q is equal to lambda w um, especially for mm1 q since we know that the throughput is equal to uh, uh, arrival rate uh, from these two formulae you can get n and q ok. Uh, waiting time uh, is nothing but r minus tau. So, this we get from the p k formula 
response time this tau is given. So, we can get waiting time. So, we get R and W and from that we can get N and Q. So, at least for MG 1 Q we actually have uh, all the answers uh, that we need. Okay. Um, now, uh, actually this uh, response time uh, formula is actually available for MMCQ also and actually also MMCK. Uh, we are not uh, uh, going to talk about this in this course, but you can refer to any queuing theory systems, uh, queuing systems textbook and uh, these two formulae you can find. Um, but no formula actually there is this MGC and MGCK is actually just not solved. You can get approximate answers, but you do not get exact answers. Okay, so, that was about the response time. Uh, we are also going to talk about some other results uh, today. Uh, these are about arrivals and uh, let us get into them. So, there is a very interesting relationship between uh, when inter arrival time is exponentially distributed and the Poisson distribution. Okay. So, what is that relationship? So, suppose inter arrival time is memoryless, which is that means that it is exponentially distributed with the rate lambda. Um, and if uh, x is the random variable denoting the inter arrival time and f of t is the cumulative distribution function, this simply defines what the cumulative distribution function looks like. This is just for completeness I am telling you again we are not going to do this proof, I am just stating this result without proof. Uh, but uh, I am just showing you what exponential distribution means, this is what uh, it means, this is the uh, probability that the uh, inter arrival time will be less than t, right. This is the probability that inter arrival time is less than t. Uh, Similarly, uh, suppose the number of arrivals uh, is denoted by a t and number of arrivals a t uh, denotes the number of arrivals in interval 0 to t. Okay. Suppose a t denotes the number of arrivals to a uh, q uh, in the interval 0 to t. If the inter arrival time is memory less, then the number of arrivals has Poisson distribution. Okay. This is the relationship basically and it is vice versa also. If the number of arrivals uh, a t in an interval 0 to t has Poisson distribution with parameter lambda t, then the inter arrival time is exponentially distributed. Okay. Uh, what is Poisson distribution? You might be remembering that if uh, uh, Poisson, Poisson with, uh, with some parameter alpha somewhere random variable m has the Poisson distribution with parameter alpha, then probability that m is equal to k is e to the minus alpha alpha to the k divided by k factorial. right? So, this is actually Poisson distribution with parameter lambda t. Um, so, that says that the probability that there are a t takes the value k is e to the minus lambda t lambda t to the k divided by k factorial. So, again to repeat what this what this uh, property says is that if inter arrival time is exponentially distributed, then the number of arrivals in an interval 0 to t is uh, has Poisson distribution. Okay. So, suppose this is a timeline showing arrivals to a queuing system uh, and let us say this is the interval 0 to t. So, let us say there will be some arrival here, arrival here, arrival here, arrival here. So, these times these inter arrival times are going to be samples of an exponential distribution okay. and this number. So, this number right now is 4, this is going to be a sample from a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda t. Okay. So, uh, we have to remember this any time you see that the uh, q says m in the uh, arrival inter arrival distribution uh, that just means that the number of arrivals in an interval 0 to t has Poisson distribution. And sometimes as a short cut we describe this as uh, uh, these arrivals are termed as uh, Poisson arrivals with rate lambda. Okay. This is how we call it, we do not say a number of arrivals a t in an interval 0 to t has Poisson distribution, this is too long. We just say arrivals are Poisson or the q has Poisson arrivals with rate lambda. This is very useful, you will see later why this relationship is useful. 
Uh, now let us move on to the other uh, properties. Um, now for the arrivals itself there are some 4 properties and we will be going through these one by one. So, first one is poison arrivals C time averages and it has a very nice uh, short form called pasta and this is a very interesting uh, property. Okay. This is why poison arrivals are important actually because if we can assume poison arrivals then there are lot of nice properties. So, first of all uh, there is a phrase here called time average. So, let me explain what a time average is. Okay. So, let n t be the number of customers in the system at time t. The long term time average of n t is given by uh, the limit as t tends to infinity integral 0 to t n t dt divided by t. Uh, so, this is just an integral formula maybe it is difficult to understand. So, I will just explain what that means. So, suppose this shows the graph of n t uh, versus t. Okay, so, uh, let me use another color here. So, suppose uh, there was an arrival here, an arrival here, an arrival here, then maybe it stayed like this for some time uh, and uh, let us say it goes, uh, there was a departure and then there is another departure here. Okay. Okay. Let us uh, assume that this is our uh, time frame that we are looking at from here 0 to t and this is our uh, the overall time frame that we are looking at. Okay. Now, uh, the question we are asking is what is the time average? So, what is the, uh, what is the time average average of n t uh, in this period? Let me call this maybe capital T actually, let us call this capital T in 0 to capital T. Okay. And remember this is 1, this is 2 okay. uh, and let this be uh, time unit uh, T 1 and this T 2 and this is say some T 3. Okay. So, uh, the time average here is basically, so if we were just going to take an arithmetic average, we have one sample of 0 here, then we have uh, nt was 1 for some time, then it was 2 for some time, then it is 1. At the end of this uh, t, uh, it ended with 1. So, just a simple average here would be 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 divided by 4 and it is actually 1. But you can see here that actually the value 2 was held by nt uh, by a longer time. right? So, all this time the value of nt was 2. So, it makes does not make sense that the average here is 1. So, basically time average is something that takes the time that a value is taken for, it takes that into account. Okay. So, wh what will this be? Let us give these things numbers so that it, it becomes a little more clear. So, let us say t it was 10 and this is 1 and this is 2, t1 is 1, t2 is 2 and t3 is 9. So, now we, uh, we will take these durations into account, 0 value was held for about 1 unit of time, nt was 1 for another 1 unit of time, then uh, nt was 2 for uh, this is 9 minus 2 7 units of time and nt was uh, 1 again for another 1 unit of time right from 9 to 10 and all of this we divide by the overall time horizon. We have 1 plus 14 plus 1 which is 16 divided by 10 which is 1.6. Right? So, now it is making a little bit more sense since the um, number 2 was actually the number of customers there were 2 number of customers in the system for almost 7 units of time. So, that has given this whole uh, numerator some weight and it has brought up the average to 1.5. So, this is a this is a better way of calculating averages uh, of values that are changing over time. So, uh, that is what is and now in this case if this is this time averaging is done for a long period of time where this time t is large that is when it is a long term time average. Okay. So, that is what long term time average is. Uh, 
So, what is a scene average? We are talking here also about C Poisson arrival C time average. Okay, so what is this C time average? Okay, so again, um, so uh, let's consider the number of customers in the system at time t as, as given by n t. So, uh, a scene average is actually an instantaneous average. It is what an arrival sees. Okay. And it is an intense instantaneous uh, average as seen by an arriving customer uh, which is so it is the average of NT conditioned on an what is called an arrival epoch. That means we are only taking those average uh, samples that uh, th those samples of NT that are actually seen by an arrival. Okay. So, uh, for example, again I am going to draw that same graph. So, we had NT going like this approximately. Okay. So, there, there was an arrival here and there was an arrival here and this is 1 and this is 2. So, this arrival would have seen actually 0 in the system and this arrival would have seen 1 in the system. Okay. And then we have not in this particular uh, time horizon we do not really have uh, more arrivals. So, actually for these 2 arrivals the average would be 0 plus 1 by 2 which is uh, 0.5. Okay. So, this would be actually the arrival as uh, the, uh, the average of NT as seen by arrivals. Okay. Now, you can see the uh, difference right what Poisson arrivals see time averages what this uh, property says is that these two the long term time average and the instantaneous average as seen by an arriving customer these two are the same if arrivals are Poisson, okay, only for Poisson arrivals, these are the same. Okay, so again, it seems a little non-intuitive that that you know, if I'm observing a graph uh, of that uh, you know NT, isn't on an average, at least on an average, you can have different values uh, variable, but uh, on an average, uh, shouldn't an arrival see whatever is the average the system has? Uh, but this is not the case. Um, I will give an example. So, consider a DD1Q with service time is equal to 1 second and inter arrival time 2 seconds. Okay. I am going to draw a timeline. So, this is let us say this is a server timeline suppose okay. and uh, let us start with an arrival here itself. Okay. So, if there is an arrival here then now for the next 1 second the server is going to be busy. Okay, this is 1. The next arrival we know is not going to happen until time 2. This is where the arrival is going to happen. Now, the server will again be busy. Now, the next arrival is going to happen here at 4. Okay, then again the server will be busy. Again now the next arrival is at 6. You know. uh, if you ask the question as to what is the time average here, okay, what is the long term time average, okay, you can see that actually this, this frame just repeats, this frame is basically a frame of 2 time units where half the time the server is busy, server has, uh, uh, has a number of customers in the system is 1, the rest of the times it is 0 and this is repeating. So, actually the average is going to be this 1 multiplied by 0 plus 1 multiplied by 1, right? this is 1 multiplied by 0 plus 1 multiplied by 1 divided by 2 and this frame just repeats. So, it is enough to get this average and it is intuitive, it is kind of obvious to everybody that uh, even the long term average is just going to be this, this is this frame just repeats. Okay. But what is it that is seen by arrivals? What, what does this request see? It sees 0 customers. What does this request see? It is 0, here also 0, here also 0. So, every arriving request always sees 0 in the system. Okay. So, no time average and instantaneous average uh, as seen by an arrival are not the same and they are only same if uh, the arrivals are poison and this result is called pasta. So, let us now go to the remaining properties. Uh, we have seen uh, this property now and we will see these three. Uh, the first of these says that uh, splitting of poison arrivals remains poison. What does that mean? Uh, consider an example, for example, let us say this uh, stream here of poison arrivals represents some packets 
that are coming to a router ok. And then these are two links this is some link and this is some other link and the router basically sends them out on two different links and suppose that this can be uh, captured as a probability that some with probability alpha some of the packets go here and with some probability 1 minus alpha some of the packets go here. So, uh, what this property says is that if this arrival stream of the packets uh, if that is Poisson then this split stream also remains Poisson with the intuitive rate which is this rate is uh, alpha lambda and this rate is 1 minus alpha lambda ok. So, it is again uh, a very useful property that we will see later. Uh, currently uh, you might think what is the use of it, but I can give an example of uh, a, uh, a straightforward use of it that um, if, if we wanted to uh, model this link as a queuing system let us say, uh, then we know that uh, arrivals here are also Poisson. So, if this was um, if you could assume for this for example as that this is an infinite buffer uh, single server queuing system, then we could model this as mg1 even though there has been a split here, we can uh, be confident that this is also an mg1 queue and, uh, uh, and, and here it is the same this, that this is also mg1 ok. So, if there is a single Poisson stream it is getting split, we can assume that the split stream is also Poisson and for the if there is a queuing system after this split that we need to model then we can assume Poisson arrivals to those queuing systems also that is what the use of this property is. Uh, similarly, there is another property about superposition of Poisson arrivals. Uh, now, if there are this is the opposite basically if there are two streams of Poisson uh, arrivals coming into one place where they merge. So, now this you can think of it as again you can say packets coming from different links and getting merged uh, into one uh, link. Uh, the sum of these two streams the merger merging of these two streams or the in other words the superposition of these two sort of arrival streams also remains Poisson. So, again why is this useful because if this link we want to model as a queuing system then we will be able to model it as mg1 and then we have the advantage of uh, having Poisson arrivals. Um, the last property uh, is this one the output of an mm1 queue is Poisson. Uh, so, you can see uh, basically these are all properties about Poisson arrivals. Uh, first one was that Poisson arrival C time averages that is very very useful. So, we do not have to do different mathematics uh, in terms of uh, what an arrival C is in the system on arrival uh, at arrivals versus any other time. This is very convenient because um, if we can find for example, the average number of customers in a system. Uh, which is just the time average. Suppose we can do the maths and find the time average of the system. Then if arrivals are Poisson then we can confidently say that that is exactly the average that an arrival is also going to see. And that uh, in fact this is used, uh, this is used in uh, derivation of the PK formula. So, again we have not uh, done the derivation, but you can see some textbooks and uh, you will see that this is this property uh, is actually used in the derivation of the PK formula. And these uh, we will uh, use in the some uh, subsequent uh, classes where we are going to uh, learn uh, something called queuing networks. Okay. So, what is this last property now? Uh, basically uh, it is about this inter departure time distribution. Okay, so, if you have a queue to which there are some arrivals uh, and let us imagine that this is we are looking at a departure timeline here, there are going to be some departures here uh, between let us say some time 0 to t, okay, there are going to be some departures. Uh, we can ask both questions you know, what is the inter departure time distribution or we can ask you know if there are d t is the uh, number of departures. in time 0 to t. We can also ask what is the uh, uh, probability distribution of this number. 
So, uh, for an MG1Q we know that uh, inter arrival time distribution is exponential and that means arrivals are Poisson. So, the question is what can we say about departures can we if we know that this is Poisson can we say something about uh, the departure process. Uh, so, turns out in general we cannot say anything, but if the service time is also memory less then departures are also Poisson. So, except for mm1, okay, so if this is Poisson and this is exponential, then departures are also Poisson. Okay. Again this uh, is a property that helps us in putting together uh, queuing networks which can be analyzed and this we will see in some subsequent classes. So, uh, this law actually has a name it is called Burke's law. Uh, it is basically called uh, says that the output of an MM1Q is also Poisson. So, this concludes uh, this lecture and uh, next we will be doing some examples. We have learnt a lot of results in this lecture today. So, we will do some examples and we will also continue our case study of the web server. Thank you.